I'm delighted to be with Rondolin Korolak in the studio. Hello, Rondolin. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Now, you have written a new book, Financial Foreplay is its very tantalizing title. And I know that you have, um, you have a different way of, of uh, kind of approaching or your suggestions to how businesses approach the pursuit of customers. And basically, I think what you say is that we shouldn't be just out chasing customers. Instead, we need to be looking a little bit more closely at our financials. Please tell me more. I think the easy fix when you don't have enough money in your bank account is to think that you need more sales and more customers. Yep. Nothing could actually be farther from the truth. Okay. In fact, most businesses should, should actually stop spending money on advertising and figure out, first of all, whether they're actually profitable and whether they have cash flow. Okay. And those two things, as you know, are completely different. Okay. So a bit you're saying really to any business now, if you're struggling a bit with cash, stop chasing customers, get back to looking at your financial basics. Yep. Correct. And how would, so for somebody watching this, how do you suggest they can very sort of straightforwardly get a complete grip on their finances? Where's the best place to start? Well, I think the very first place to start would be to run a profit and loss statement. Take okay. a look at what profit position are you currently at. Mm -hmm. Then they need to actually quickly calculate their cash flow. And it's as simple as looking at some changes in four key accounts that are on the balance sheet. Those key accounts are, of course, receivables payables, fixed assets, and inventory. It's mm -hmm. the least or it's the most likely place that people will actually have cash right. trapped in their business. Okay. And do you observe then a lot of small businesses particularly that just do not have a, a grip on this sort of area? Is this... I would say 99.5% right. of businesses worldwide, not just in Australia, not just small businesses either, don't actually understand the importance of cash flow, nor do they calculate it on a regular basis. Mm. And how often would you say that a business needs to be really looking at their cash flow? Should this be a, a constant thing, or is it something we go into from time to time? What are your thoughts there? Well, I think if the business doesn't have any money to pay its creditors as they're coming due, they need to be looking at cash flow probably daily or weekly. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily need to be so on an ongoing basis, but for many, they will need to actually start there. Yeah, okay. So a business then that maybe has got a bit of a struggle with cash flow, again, what, do you, what would you say to them? Where, what, where should they kind of start to make changes, do you think? Well, it depends. Um, if you, they have receivables, so if they're not a cash on delivery type of yeah. company, the very first place to go looking would be accounts receivable. Most okay. people let that drag on and on because we don't like to ask for money. Right. I love asking for money okay. because when you get that money, it goes straight into your back pocket because oftentimes you've paid for the actual goods and paid for people to perform those services months right. and months ago. The second best place, depending on whether you're an inventory or service-based business, mm -hmm. would be to go looking in your work in progress. Right. So for service-based businesses, how quickly are you generating you know, invoices to actually yep. push that into the hands of the customer so that you can get your money back? And for those that have inventory, it would be looking in the inventory. Oftentimes, okay. people like to store inventory. They get attached to their inventory. It's a business. It's not personal. All right. Okay, so with, with receivables, and you're suggesting that a lot of businesses invoice and then kind of forget about it. They don't chase the money. Is that what you're saying? Some businesses don't even invoice. So depending right. on um, what type of a business you're in, particular people in graphic design, mm -hmm. also a lot of tradespeople, often have what I call the magic drawer. And I love the magic drawer because it's full, when I open it, of things that they forgot to invoice. Right. You can't collect what hasn't yet gone out the door. So the first place to start would be get that stuff into mm. MYOB or QuickBooks, whatever program you're using, and yep. invoice it. The second thing would be make a call. Develop a relationship with people on the other end of the line because we like to pay people that we like. Yes, So true. a lot of people try to do things <coughs> electronically via fax and email. If you don't have your money, I would say you need to either A, go see the people, or you need to pick up the phone and ask for the money. Yeah, okay. Which I know, you know a lot of small businesses hate that action and probably for that very reason don't chase it and so the situation worsens doesn't it because if you've got if someone's got away with not paying you for 30 60 or 90 days then you're going to have a bit of a, you're going to be on the back foot when it comes to kind of getting that money back from them. Well, it depends, I guess, on what you hate most. Do you hate right. asking for the money or do you hate being poor? Yeah. Okay. You have to make a decision. I hate being poor, so I go get the money. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So um, any other particular tips that you would give a business that's kind of sitting there thinking, well, you know, yes, I'm, I've, I'm suffering from some of those problems. Are there any other things that we could, should be doing? Any little tips or tricks we I should be considering? I think one of the, the biggest ones, especially at this time of the year, is fixed assets. So the government's always, you know, saying you've got a 50% tax rebate if you buy a new vehicle. One of the biggest ways that you can shoot yourself in the foot, if you are a small business owner in particular, is to go out and buy 
a vehicle that you don't need to produce income in your business because you're getting the 50% tax right. rebate. I don't care if it's an 85% tax rebate. If you don't have cash flow, you shouldn't be buying that vehicle. Okay. And you're also hurting yourself long term because it hurts your return on assets. You know, no one's going to buy your business in the future if you're loaded up on the, on the asset okay. side of your balance sheet with things that simply don't So basically make money. Don't, don't buy anything that you don't need. I mean, that's the right. general rule, isn't it? Okay. Rondo, thank you very much for that. So sure. to find out more about you, we can go to imagineeringunlimited.com. That's correct. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.